The tired ones move restless feet to action. Restore the broken hearts. It's time to dream again. For every time and season, a harvest finally coming. The young are prophesying, and the old are living testimony. So 
know all that you deserve And all of my deceptions All of my duplicity Now there is no record You are still the best of me And this is why I thank the Lord For saving me When I was weak So I will sing This is why I thank the Lord For everything This is why I thank the Lord All of my affection Everything I have to give The song of my attention It's measured in the phrase I live And this is how I thank the Lord For saving me when I was weak So I will sing This is how I thank the Lord For everything This is how I thank the Lord And this is how I thank the Lord For loving me and keeping me So I will sing church family and it is so good to be with my family this morning why don't you turn around and say hello to your neighbors in person, we want to say that we are so glad you are here. If you're new, we want to get you connected. So those of you watching online, you can go to our digital connection card at destinyonline.com slash new, and a staff member will follow up with you. If you're with us in person, you can grab a connection card from the seat in front of you and take it to the lobby where we have a gift waiting just for you. Here at Destiny, we believe in the power of prayer. So for 30 minutes following every service, we have the prayer center open for you. It's in the lobby and through the glass doors. We would love to see you there. Here at Destiny, there is so much going on, so check it out. 
We are so excited to announce that Baby Dedication is on May 12th, which is Mother's Day. We cannot wait to see all the families bring their kids, dedicating them unto the Lord. So you won't want to miss it. So make sure you register at destinyonline.com and we can't wait to see you. Hey, church family, we are so excited for our next Outreach Serve Saturday event on Saturday, May 4th at both campuses. We have so many serving opportunities available, such as helping a local school, neighborhood reach, sidewalk prayer at Planned Parenthood, feeding the homeless, and so much more. Go to destinyonline.com slash outreach to sign up and to check out all the ways you can get involved. Come be a part of loving our city. We've been told over and over, I've heard it my whole life, that divorce in the church is the same as divorce in the world. But that is a lie, and it normalizes divorce. The truth is that if couples actively pursue their faith in marriage, if they pray together, the statistics go down to one to three percent. That's a big difference. And so that's why we wanna encourage you, and we've got some exciting things coming up. We're having our spring marriage retreat May 2nd through the 4th in beautiful Walnut Creek, California. Yeah, it's gonna be a powerful time of connection. We have Doug Tox is gonna be our main speaker and he's walking us through heart to heart bonds. This is a chance to connect spiritually, to learn how to communicate, to learn how to not let little issues rot our marriage. You can get more information at destinyonline.com slash marriage. Here, right fifth. here. Fifth. Okay, six, fifth. Maybe we just do it for 24 hours. <laughs> that sounds like yeah, a plan. Yeah, just pray for 24 hours. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, that's going to be exciting right here, back here. Right back here. I mean, I think last wall might have been my favorite wall of all times. Of course, every every month is my favorite wall of all times. This is what happens, yes. But uh, so we have it on the fifth, and then we'll go back down to Sacramento with Mario Marillo on June 2nd. So just make sure those, those dates, just make sure those dates are on your calendar. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be amazing. I mean, do, how many of you were at the wall last, last month? Yeah, last it's... month. Yeah, it was, I mean, the people, the salvations at the altar and the healings, I, I tell you what, that's church. I, I need a little bit more energy from you. you you're sleepy this morning. Come on, girl, <laughs> come on. Don't be, this is not sleepy church. You know, if this is what happens. This if is, I'm too hyper, he's like, what happened to you? And if I'm, if I'm like mellow, he's like, no, don't be mellow. Don't be mellow. I tell you, uh, Tuesday night, I was really excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And Wednesday night. I know. You guys had, had your little party. We had our party, and I had way more sugar than oh, I probably right. should have. Yeah. Uh, even Brian Dobson was like, what Ooh. is, don't let her drive. Yeah. What is wrong yeah. with her? Anyway. So, it, great well, time with the family of God. It was awesome. It's awesome. And so, we got a lot of great things, which you saw. I mean, hey. For us, special is uh, Mother's Day this year because our little Sunday will our be, little Sunday. yeah, is going to be yes. des ded dedicated, and so we have both uh, campuses and all three services. We can get that. We will done. be hopping back and forth. One hundred percent. 
And uh, I think that's about it. Is there anything, anything else? You know what? I, I just thought it would be interesting to tell you. You know, we just sang this song, Honey from the Rock or Honey in the honey Rock. Honey in the Rock. Do you know? I, I didn't know that. Take that, right. that There's well, Honey in the Rock. Do you want to be a... I'm your honey. I'm your honey. <laughs> you are. We just had an anniversary. But I was going to tell you. Yeah, we did. Did you know that's from the Bible? In, in Psalms 86, 16, it talks about the finest wheat and wild honey from the rock. Honey it's the telling rock. us that even in the most difficult, hard times of life, there is goodness from God. Amen. So, Amen. Come on. Preach yes. it, girl. Preach it. It's awesome. Hey, I got something exciting to tell they, they won't experience, but um, after five, missing five straight Sunday, my mom is going to be back in church at 11 a.m. Yes, she is. Yeah, whoa. She's a, she's a miracle. She I, is a miracle. I, and, and me and my mom had a sleepover on, <laughs> on Friday night. I, I went, Mom, I'm spending the night. So yes, I came over we there. put an extra bed in her house, so she has some house she, guests she, now. She is so excited. She's never missed five weeks in a row of church ever in her life. It's a phenomenal. She did watch online, but she wasn't in the house of God. Yeah, I, it's I don't not even the know, same. I, I don't know if she's hitting the right buttons. She might have been. <laughs> she might have been watching last year at that time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I want to welcome everybody to Destiny this morning. There's so many of you here at 830. It's awesome. And then everybody that is watching online, Gail and Terry Bowman are watching from Louisiana. 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 They're back. Make sure you both come back. Yeah, That's Louisiana. That's like saying, we need you. Make sure you both come back. I remember when I went to the Super Bowl, they gatored back down there. I mean, the, I, we tasted it. Yeah, and no, and and I never ordered it again. No, it's really chewy. It's really chewy. Uh, Ralph, I don't have you ever like had gator? Alligators. You've had gator before. Just last yes, week, no, you like, had gator. Yes, yeah, I don't like it. You got to put a lot of sauce on it. You guys got to put a lot of sauce on it. You know, we have these they, lizards in our garage oh my that are the size of baby Jurassic alligators. Park. Yes, they, a baby alligators. And they freak me out. They are, they are. But they eat ugh. bugs. Maybe we should get one of those and, and fry it up. We'll just fry it up. We'll call it gator. Not in my frying pan. <laughs> you better, you're going to have to get your own frying pan for that. Yeah, anyway. Ugh. But welcome, everybody that's watching. And I, I want to I turn the, turn the, um, uh, the moment here in just a second. But I want to remind people about giving. Uh, God... There's a multiplication uh, principle of God that he never walks away from, all right? God is a God of multiplication. Uh, very simple Bible. Remember your uh, story. You learned it in Sunday school. God, I mean, Jesus said, hey, give me the fish and the loaves. What did he do? He blessed it. He broke it. And what happened? It multiplied. multiplied. And so if he can do that with fishes and loaves, what guess what he could do with your finances? Somebody say amen. Amen. I mean, amen. he'll bless it, he'll yes. break it, Thank and he'll Lord. multiply it. God is a God Thank of multiplication. You, so honor God with your tithes and offering. You'll see it come back into your life. You know, five, he's fed 5,000 people with seven things. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. How many people want that kind of blessing yes. in their life? Amen. Amen. Yes. amen. amen. We're going to, we're going to go back in the worship, but I, I just want to acknowledge somebody that's watching right now from their hospital room, Mike Cunningham, who's from Rockland, uh, part of the Rockland football program. He has leukemia, he has some, some uh, mm. things going on in his life, and he's right mm. in the middle of treatment. Uh, he started it this week. Mm. He, he's been watching us every Sunday online. Mm. Chris Johnson's been praying for him and things, and um, He's got 100 days of bone marrow process wow. that he has to go through. We believe that God is a God of yes, miracles. We, do. Yes, we believe we do. it. How many believers do I have yes. here? Amen. Yes. 
Mike, yes. we believe right now yes. for you. We're believing Praying right now for you, for you in yes. Jesus' name. Jesus healing name. over your body yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus You're, he name. is the Lord God who heals, heals us, you. and by his stripes we Amen. have been made whole. So I speak Amen. healing over your life in Amen. Jesus' name. Come Amen. on, stand up right now, people. We're going to worship God. Let's give God our best worship right now.
church. Come on, church. Oh, you can do better than that. Give him glory right now. Give him your best praise right now. Give him your best praise right now. I just, I want you to get in the habit of this because you're going to do it for eternity, right? Okay, posture of heaven right here. Come on, everybody, get in this posture right here. You're worthy, Lord God. We're worthy, worthy, worthy. And we fill the atmosphere right now with your praise. We fill, Lord God, this room, Lord God, with all, Lord God, within us. We give you the best praise of our lives, Lord, right now. We are thankful for this moment, Lord God. Thank you for blessing us that we can be in the house of the Lord today, lifting up the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. So church, right now, give him your best praise in this moment. Amen. 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 Yeah, you can be seated. Reserve a little time for the end of service because we're going to go back into the expression of worship. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Ruth. It's in the Old Testament. Um, Ruth's a great name because that's my wife's middle name. It's my daughter's middle name, my granddaughter's middle name. Ruth. It kind of sounds good coming out, out of your Ruth. Just kind of say that. Ruth. Say, say it with me. Ruth. Yeah, Book of Ruth. We'll be there in a minute. Every organism has a DNA, all right? DNA is the molecules and the cells that make up a body. Now listen, this, this is important. What's on the inside produces what we see on the outside. That's the whole sermon right there. That's the whole sermon. Destiny has a DNA. The core of who we are. There is a genetic code written into us by what the New Testament tells us a New Testament church is like, and it produces what we see. John chapter 7, verse 38 says, Out of your innermost being shall flow rivers. Where did it come from? From the innermost being shall flow rivers out of your life. Our DNA flows out of our life. Somebody say amen. The core of who we are as a church is that we are a people that passionately pursue the presence of God. When you think about this house, we are a house that hosts the presence. We host the presence of God in this place. And we really believe this, that when God's presence shows up, it changes everything. Somebody say amen. Conversely, when he doesn't show up or he's not invited to show up, then nothing happens. All you have is a religious gathering with no power to change anything. Two things I want to emphasize this morning. The word and worship. The word and worship. We, we preach the word, we declare the word, and we worship together. We get in, into the posture of heaven. We, we, we begin to lift our voices. We clap our hands. We lift our hands. It is the posture of heaven. In the Old Testament, it's the book of Ruth is a story of redemption. The book of Ruth has four chapters. And everything that is in those four chapters apply to building the kingdom right now in this place. Ruth chapter 1. Now it came to pass in those days when the judges ruled, there was a famine, there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and his wife was Naomi, and the name of his two sons were Melion and Chilion. They sound like rappers. Milion and Chilion with their hats on sideways. <laughs> of Bethlehem, Judah. And remember last week I preached on transition? And they went. There's your transition statement. 
to a country of Moab and remained there. And Melimelech and Naomi, her husband, di- her husband, died. And she was left with her two sons. They took wives of the woman of Moab, and their name was Oprah, Opa, not Oprah, Opa. And the other was named Ruth. And they dwelled there 10 years. Both Milion and Chilion also died, so the women survived her two sons and her husband. Now follow me. They lived in a town named Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread, all right? Think about Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. He declared himself in John chapter 6, verse 35, as the bread of life. It's also a very common theme of Jesus' life. When he was tempted in the wilderness, Satan came to him and said, hey, take these to- stones and turn, them into, and turn them into bread. And Jesus said, you shall not live by bread alone, but watch every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What was Jesus described as in John chapter 1? It is the word, and the word became dwe- flesh and dwelt among us. So here we go. Jesus was born in a place of bread and was the place of the word. So he was the bread of life because we know that life's sustenance comes from the word of God. Somebody say amen. Bethlehem was in the territory of Judah. Judah means praise. So the Bible tells us in chapter 1 there was a famine in the land. There's a famine, and there's a family there, and they leave Bethlehem, Judah, and things begin to die as soon as they leave the land of bread and the land of praise. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. That's what's happening in churches today. There is a famine of the presence of God and the word of God. There's a scarcity in church today. But here's what I want you to see. When they left the land of praise and the word, everything started dying. I think it's interesting in, those, in this story, it was the men that died. Mm, there's an assault on men today. When... The family leaves the environment of the word. When when the family leaves the environment of worship, the first thing that dies in that family is a biblical sense of masculinity. Mm. Man, do you realize how important it is to keep your family in the land of the word and the land of worship? Everything dries up and dies when you leave the word and praise. You have to understand those two critical components, the word and praise, are absolutely essential for you to grow in in your life and prosper in the things of God. Thousands of years ago, God made a statement through this family. If you do not continue in the place where the bread is being broken to fed you, feed you, if, if you're not in the place where, where the bread is being broken, if you're not in a place of continual worship and praise, then you will never be able to sustain the things that are alive in your life. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. Men, Everything in your life will dry up, will dry up and die without the environment of the word of God in your life and the environment of worship. Mm. You don't believe me. Now follow me. God created everything to have an environment that it dwells in. You You don't understand what I'm saying. God created everything to have an environment that it dwells in. Genesis chapter one, God creates environments and then places something in those environments to live. The environment is what sustained life. You you can't have a fish without water. He put the fish in the water so it could sustain the life of the fish. He put the stars in the heavens because the heavens produce a natural gas which sustains the stars from burning out. He put the plants in the ground 
because all the nutrients that are in the soil sustain the plants. But when you remove these things from their environment, death enters into the equation. Do you hear what I'm preaching right now? Do you know you were created with an environment that sustains you? God said, let us make man in my, our image. When you separate yourself from the source of your life, immediately things begin to die. Your soul will begin to die. Your emotions will begin to die. Peace starts to die. Joy starts to die in your life. Stay out of God's environment long enough, you'll see your relational world die. You'll see your marriage die. You'll begin to see your wisdom die. You'll begin to see your morality die. Your kids will start going crazy, and the blessings of God will dry up in your life. Somebody help this preacher right now. Come on now. It is almost an oxymoron that we relax in the blessings of God. And in our comfort, we start removing ourselves from the very environment that brought the blessing in the first place. Ugh. We start believing that we had something to do with producing the blessings of God in our life. It is only in our desperation then that we press into the environment that breathes life into us. When trouble hits, we realize what we need God and we press in to the presence of God. And as we press into the presence of God, the manifestations of God's blessing begin to show up in our life. Things begin to turn around. Psalms chapter 40, he also brought me out of a horrible pit. How many people want to give a testimony right there? Out of the miry clay. Now watch the transition of the move of God. The progression of the blessing God. And set my feet on the rock and establish my steps. Subconsciously, because I don't think we'll ever do it intentionally. Because of the goodness of God, we relax and we're not desperate for God when God is blessing us. And we start moving out of Bethlehem, Judah... We start moving out of the place of the word and worship, and all of a sudden, church becomes an option. His house becomes an option. And we start treating this place like a convenience store. We stop in our, here on our way to play someplace else. Mm. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together except if you have a really good internet connection and you can watch online. Hmm. As, as is the manner of some, but exhort one another so much more as you see the day approaching. You may not realize, but this house is so important to your spiritual survival. Because it is the environment that God creates. So the word of God, the bread of life can be broken. And as he breaks it, it begins to multiply to feed the hungry souls of our lives. Now, if you know the story of Ruth, if you go to chapter 2, after things die, Naomi and Ruth return to Bethlehem, Judah. And there they meet a guy named Boaz, that's another great name, Boaz. Who is Boaz? Boaz is a rich, single, good-looking man. Mm. All the single ladies put their hands in the air. I was at the Super Bowl game that the lights went out, the 49ers were playing the Ravens, and I don't even know who sings that song, but that song's being sung, and I was so depressed at halftime. All the ladies had their hands in the air when that song, and I'm doing the same thing, and my son goes, are you an idiot, Dad? What are you doing? <laughs> Follow me. Boaz means strength. Boaz is a type of Christ in the Old Testament. So in chapter 1, they're not only leaving the house of bread, the house of the word, and praise, they're also leaving the place where they would eventually find their strength because that's where Boaz lives. 
We say we want to passionately pursue the presence of God. Now watch as how this works together. God created us to be in the environment that we will thrive in. The word and worship. The word and worship. But I want you to notice something. But God has created an environment that he lives in. Did you see that? Boaz is a type of Christ. Where does Boaz live? He lives in the word and worship. He lives in the, in the place where the bread of life is, and he lives in praise. Jesus is in the word. John chapter 1 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with your eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands have handled, concerning what? The word of which is Jesus. Where else do you think you're gonna find Jesus in your life? You're gonna find Jesus in the word and you're gonna, see, you're gonna find Jesus in worship. You're gonna see Jesus in the word and you're gonna see Jesus in worship. Somebody give this preacher some help right now. Psalms 22 verse 3 says, God inhabit the praises of his people. Let me tell you, Jesus doesn't live in the Moab of your life. He's over there in Bethlehem, Judah, because God lives in that environment. And if you're going to find Jesus, guess what we are going to do in this place? We're going to preach the word, and we're also going to worship. That's where you're going to find Jesus. You're going to find him in the word. You're going to find him in worship. See, we're not here to put on a show. We're not. Now, we believe doing things with excellence inspires people and honors God. But we are not here to put on a show. When the modern church has adopted the culture and the values of the world, it makes the word and worship an environment, an entertainment center for spectators. And so you got people hopping from church to church because somebody else is putting on a better uh, show in town. I am not interested in the show. I want the presence. I'm not interested in the show. I want the presence. I want the word, the infallible word, the immutable word, the eternal word. I don't want to water down the word. I don't want to compromise the word. I don't want a feel good word. I want a word that convicts. I want a word that cuts. I want a word that sheds light in the midst of darkness. Oh. I, I am highly disappointed in myself if I don't offend you on a weekly basis. Listen, the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts. I don't. But the Holy Spirit convicts so he can change you. And it's the word that brings life and brings conviction into your life. My job, my job is to preach the word. You see, the word isn't going to agree with your lifestyle all the time. You sleeping around, God's not going to line up with that. The word isn't going to agree with culture. The word isn't going to agree with your attitude. The word isn't always going to agree with your behavior. My job is to preach the word, the word of life, and allow the Holy Spirit to take the word and deposit it into your life in an area that needs to be exposed. Oh, I don't know about you, but I want the word. I want to live in the word. I, I never, as a pastor, want to leave the house of bread. I, I never want to leave the place where the word is being preached. I, I, I'm not going to allow this church to modify the word. Everything starts with the word of God, and when we begin to change the word of God, everything dries up and begins to die. God's environment is the word. God lives in the word. That's why the apostle Paul said this in 2 Timothy, preach the word, preach the word, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Bethlehem, the house of bread. Bethlehem, the place of the word. And, and, God's environment is our worship and praise. Boaz, a type of Christ, strength, 
lives in Judah. He lives in praise. God, I already quoted it for you, Psalms 22. God inhabits the praises of his people. Why do we do what we do around here? It's because no, nobody is sending us something and say, hey, do it this way. We start our, our, our service with worship. We start our service with, with praise. We give a significant amount of our corporate experience to worship and praise. Why? Because we are a people who passionately pursue the presence of God. That's our DNA. God has decided, hear, hear me. God has decided where he is going to live, and he decides that he is going to live in our worship and praise. I, I don't know why God created music as the avenue of worship and praise, but you cannot deny and debate Scripture. It, it is 100% supported in Scripture that that's the moment and that's how we do it corporately is through worship and praise, through music. Psalms 100, make a joyful shout unto the Lord all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Want some more? Psalms 104 says, I will sing, uh, sing to the Lord as long as I live. I don't care how old you are. You are to sing to the Lord as long as you shall live. I will sing praise to my God as long as I have been. How many alive people do I have in this room right now? Yeah. Psalms 150 says, praise the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the heart. Praise him with the timbrel and the death. Praise him with the string instrument and flute. Praise him with the loud sound. Praise him with the white crashing sound. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Need some more? Psalms 98, shout joyfully to the Lord, all you are. Break forth in song, rejoice and sing his praises. Psalms 47 says, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Mm. You have to understand the environment that God lives in. The living, you're lazy boy. And it's not up to us to choose what environment God lives in. Can I tell you, Destiny, this is not a cemetery. This is not a mortuary. This is not a library. This is the house of God. And if you're coming here to meet with him in his house, you got to enter into his presence with praise and worship. I will not lead a church that is too dignified to magnify the king of kings. When we come to his house, we create an environment so that God can live in. I don't know about you, but I'm desperate to be around Jesus. I am desperate to be around Jesus. I want more of Jesus. I want less of Greg, and I want more of Jesus. And Jesus lives in Judah. He lives in praise. So when we come into this house, we get here because we need Jesus. We need Jesus. But if I want Jesus to be here, we must create an environment for God to live in, and that is worship and praise. Somebody give him your praise right now. How's my energy today? Mm, pretty good, huh? Hmm. The reason why you haven't felt the presence of God is because God doesn't live in your complaining spirits. He doesn't live in your depression. He does not live in your apathy. He does not live in your complacency. Can I tell you something? Since I'm on a roll, can I just tell you something? Lazy worship bothers me. How could you be apathetic about worship? If you understand who you're worshiping, if you understand your eternal destiny, the only reason why you're apathetic and lazy in your worship, you don't understand who you're worshiping. Your worship is small 
And when you worship small, your God is small. And that's the reason why God isn't doing anything big in your life. Mm. The reasons why churches experience the supernatural presence of God in a greater way, it's simple. They have built a bigger house for God to dwell in. Oh my goodness. Through worship. If you want a big God in this house, then we got to create an environment for a big God to live in because God lives in our worship. And if you want a big God in your life, you got to make the environment that God can live in. And that is the environment of worship and praise. Let's build God a bigger house here at Destiny, a house of worship. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15 says, therefore by him, let us, everybody say us, us. I don't want anybody to be confused. Say the word us. One more time, us. Continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, which is what? The fruit of your lips. If your lips aren't moving, you are not offering the sacrifice of praise to him. Thanks to his name. True worship and praise demands a sacrifice. I'm making some of you nervous because you think I'm going to get you to do something you're uncomfortable with. <laughs> Naomi and her husband and her two sons left Bethlehem, Judah. They left the house of bread and they left the land of praise. Where did they go? Moab. Do you know what Moab means? Moab means lazy. Literally means lazy. Moab is right outside the promised land. When you are lazy in your worship, you'll fall short of what God wants to do in your life. Now, I ain't going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. If you want to live in the land of Moab and fall short of what God has for you, that's your choice. But I ain't living in Moab, and I'm not going to allow this church to live in Moab. We're not going to be a church of lazy worship. If you live in Moab, go ahead, but watch the things of God die in your life, and this church will become a mausoleum instead of a sanctuary. I know this is heavy, but track with me. Judas betray betrayed Jesus because his heart wasn't in it. There's a praise that uh, betrays Jesus because your heart isn't in it. Judas did what the other 11 did. He looked like the other 11, but his heart was in a different place. You can come here and go through the motions. You can look like everybody else in this room. You can look what, like, uh, do what everybody else is doing in this room. You can even respond to the pastor's export, exhortation. Give God your best praise. But if your heart is not in it, you have not made the sacrifice of praise. Worship is about your heart. And when you have the right heart, the other stuff is an expression that's inside of it. Out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water, the DNA of this church. Hebrews 13, 15, which I just referred to, says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. The word sacrifice means to kill for a purpose. Mm. Why does God place such a high priority on our worship, because God understands the cost of sacrifice. For God so loved the world, in his heart, he had to make a sacrifice. He sent Jesus. I hear you. I hear you. I get it. I know. I've heard every excuse. I, I don't feel comfortable being expressive. You ought to read your Bible. It is an interesting book. I wasn't raised in that kind of church environment. I'm not used to that. Or I, I just, I'm not feeling it today. I just, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it. I, well, I wonder if Jesus felt it when he went to the cross. I get it. But in that moment, you have to sacrifice those feelings and emotions and kill it for a higher purpose. 
when you, when I sacrifice, when I kill my feelings, my emotion, the intellect for a higher purpose, here's what happens. Now watch with me because I'm getting ready to wrap things up. Sacrifice will open the door for the supernatural power of God because the cross always turns into an empty grave. Mm. My sacrifice, in it, God gets bigger. God gets bigger and my problems get smaller. God doesn't inhabit your problems, he inhabits your praises. So what kind of worshiper are we here at Destiny? I'll tell you what kind of worshipers we are. We are an in spite of it kind of worshipers. I have all hell breaking loose in my life. In spite of it, I will worship. I have cancer in my body. Mike, talking to you right now. In spite of it, I will worship. I feel far from God. In spite of it, I will worship. My marriage is broken. In spite of it, I will worship. My kids are lost in prodigals. In spite of it, I will worship. I'm, stri- I'm tired. I'm stressed out. I'm depressed. In spite of it, I will worship. So, If you need to worship him in spite of something in your life right now, I want you to stand up. Just stand up. If you need to worship him in spite of something going on in your life. And if you're not standing, that simply means that God has been so good to you. He's blessed you in such a way that you don't have an in spite of right now. So you should stand up because God is so good in your life. He has blessed your life. Now we're gonna create an we're gonna create an environment. And you know what I'm gonna say right now. Shut it. Shut that door. We're not going anything anywhere for about five minutes. In fact, the service has only been going 62 minutes right now. We're gonna create an environment that is explosive. We're gonna create an environment where the word that was preached can find uh, fertile soil in your life. You're going to create an environment for the presence of God to inhabit this place. That there's an open heaven over this place. So we are going to get right now, everybody in this room, I think I've convinced you through the word of God, there's not one of us that should be not participate. We're going to put our hands in the air. We are going to declare that he's worthy. He is worthy of it all.
Hallelujah. Stay right where you're at. You know, there's a term in, that was created to describe the visible manifestation of God. It's, a, it's called a theophany. There's a few theophanies we read about in Old Testament. One of them is when Moses had an encounter with God through the burning bush. And what's interesting, when the great I am is speaking to Moses, he said, tell Pharaoh this. And he said this phrase more than once. He said, tell him to let my people go so that they may worship me. Not let them go so they can have a new house or the food or the resources or their career path. And all those things were actually needed. But he said, let my people go so that they may worship me. And so we see there's these things that hold us captive from worship. Right now, where you're at, I want you to close your eyes. Let's lift our hands up one more time. But I want you guys to think about if there is something that is hindering you, some of those words that Pastor Greg even mentioned, depression or, or anything, maybe it's an, something that is causing worry, anxiety, strife in your mind, and it's holding you captive, and you've got to turn to that, you got to get set free. you got to get out of the bondage of that thing that is hindering you from worshiping with all your heart. Whatever it is, right where you're at, I want you to begin to speak against it. Take it captive in the name of Jesus. We're going to go back into I exalt thee before we leave. But we cannot have any chains on us. We got to be free. We got to proclaim the fullness of our exaltation. Christ came to set the captives free. So we got to walk in it. We got to live in it because he desires the greatest worship from us. In Jesus' name, let's sing one more time. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. to him. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are worthy of all our praise. God, we thank you that you've been exalted, that you've been given a name that is above every name, that every knee would bow and every tongue, not every heart, not every mind, but every tongue acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. God, we thank you that we serve a mighty king. We thank you for the work on the cross that we didn't deserve, Lord. So we give you our best praise now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God is so good. So good. What a great day to be in God's house. If you guys need prayer, anyone, I would love for you guys to go out those doors to the left. you find our prayer room and our prayer team members available for you for the next 30 minutes. We love you. Bless you. Have an amazing week. We'll see you Wednesday night here or Wednesday morning as well for the ladies. <laughs>